I'd like to pick up on uh, what Raj was mentioning a few minutes ago about acceptance, you know, that value of acceptance. Mm. For example, I've known Florence for, I don't know, 20 years or something. And we see each other often. We don't live too far away from each other. We've worked together and so on. And you may have seen me earlier uh, wiping my eyes. And it's, it's because of this. Like um, when Florence comes over, I don't see her color. I don't see her color. What I see is her love. I see her light. I see her kindness, her generosity. She's always bringing big bags of stuff. In fact, she she brings over (laughs) vegan croissant from uh, Vancouver. (laughs) That's that's my secret weapon to conquer the world. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Who can resist croissant? They are so good. Oh, my (laughs) God. And vegan ones, right? Mm -hmm. They're just so light and fluffy. And my husband, John, is a big fan of (laughs) these croissants. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my my point is around acceptance that I have never seen Florence as a woman of color. I've always seen her as this beautiful, enlightened, kind, generous human being. And so... Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Florence and, 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 and Tanya, I'm sure you're going to agree that that's what we must do, right? Mm-hmm. We, we must all see w- women, men across the world, children as if we're going to have equality, mm-hmm. we, we shouldn't see the color. Or if we do see the mm-hmm. color, it should be to see the beauty in the color versus you know, as as Tanya was saying, you know, when she goes shopping and, you know, people get a little suspicious of who she is because she's a woman of color and so on. No, that is, that's totally wrong. Or in India, you have different colors from the north to the south. You know, you're, if you're from the south, you're very black or, you know, different countries in Africa and so on. And I've coached many people, you know, I'm a coach too. So uh, I've coached many people of color and uh, I'm always taking them that way to not minimize who they are to feel that they are equal that they have the power and as Florence says go deep into your container go into that heart and find your strengths and put yourself out into the world and uh, take risks and and show the world that you are a person who's incredibly valuable. So I'd like to ask Florence and Tanya, like how can we encourage our children, young women to not be afraid of their color, to help them to be in the world. And so that people can see them without the color, if you will. I don't know. Do you tell me what you think about that? Tanya, I'll invite you first to speak. Um, I have to slightly disagree here, (laughs) just slightly. Okay. (laughs) Um, Now, uh, to explain what I mean by that is actually I'd like to be seen as a woman of color Ah. because this is who I am. I'm I love that color of my skin because first of all, I don't need to put any sunscreen on my skin. (laughs) Perfect. In the beginning of summer, I need two hours in the sun and I'm done for the whole summer. You know, this is perfect. (laughs) And what comes with that color is my experience of life. And what comes with that color is a kind of culture. For example, speaking for myself, I'm adopted. I know that my um, biological father um, comes from the US, but I don't know anything about him. Just, I just know that this comes from him. And um, as uh, Marion um, <laughs> could say I'm a fan of the US. I'm considering New York my second home. <laughs> and what happens to me is is really 
Well, I tell everybody, once the plane lands in JFK, I'm all American. And the fact that I cannot visit at the moment and that I'm losing my American slang <laughs> really because I'm, I'm talking so much German and, and so little uh, English at the moment really bothers me. So there is something in me that, that really brings a culture along. And my, my living experience is what I'm gaining through that mm -hmm. color of my skin. Um, sometimes it's, it's not nice. Sometimes it's, I wouldn't say it's hard because to be completely honest, I never had any negative experience such as being racially attacked or something like that. And I know that there are people that really have these experiences. So I don't want to say it's hard to live like that. It's, it's just, it's giving another kind of experience, but for any money in the world, I wouldn't lose that color of my skin. So this is basically what I have to disagree slightly on. Um, it, I think it's not about not seeing the color, but seeing the human being despite of the color. And, okay, and I quite agree. Anything that yeah. the culture brings with that. Fair enough, fair enough, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. But the, the yeah. differences, and I, you know, I, I and just quickly, Florence, Tanya, I love that perspective because, and what Florence was saying, the less than, more than, we as human beings, we, we like to compare. Right. And even when we're talking about that, uh, that acceptance, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the self-acceptance? Are we talking about other people accepting of us? Right. And, and that in itself is why do we need other people to accept us if we're looking mm -hmm. at all that we are? Right. And we are all equal, you know, Florence, to your mathematical uh, equation there right we are all equal Absolutely. we are who Absolutely. we are and regardless what you believe we all have the same value it's society that is putting on us we are different or we should be this or we should be that but at the end of the day and I believe Tanya that's where you are starting with your coaching as you said with the limiting beliefs is what do I believe that perhaps is not um, beneficial to really be all that I can be. And, and so that's, mm -hmm. I, I love that perspective mm -hmm. um, that you brought up because as soon as we start saying, you know, we don't see color or we don't see whatever the difference might be, we're starting to, to almost, it feels like we're starting to say this is better than that or that is um, mm -hmm. more than this. And I think we, if we could just put that aside and say, let's look at the self-acceptance, let's look at the acceptance overall, we would be in a much better place. I don't yeah. know, Florence, how you yeah. feel about that or Tanya. Yeah, I, acceptance is a key word because uh, this is the, uh, the basis of uh, building, a, a building uh, constructing whatever it is, whether it's uh, an, an actual, for example, if we take the metaphor of uh, a piece of land, and I went through that, there was, uh, we were building a home in Haiti, and it was very slopey, so of, on, because Haiti means the land of many mountains, so right on the mountain, and the first thing, of course, the design I had in mind meant uh, working with the architect, the first thing he said, accept what is, so you can't build something like this on a slope like that. So acceptance, we can't transform anything we, we don't accept. Of course, we can't want also for people to accept things the way we would like them to. Huh? They have to do their own journey and we must, uh, we must actually accompany them in that, the, the, that to the extent we can. But um, Tanya, you have, uh, you're a treasure. You are a treasure because you see, as an adoptive child, you breed so many cultures in you, mm -hmm. you see? So the same way a bouquet is made of many flowers, you bring to the world in Germany the perspective of a black woman, the perspective of an, Amer an Afro-American, and then a German Afro-American. This is so rich for them to have you, you see? Very but I believe that yeah. uh, we are all adoptives kids of the creator 
because to me, every one of us, the simple fact that we are on earth, it's not really our own place and our own, uh, that's not technically uh, where we are from. So I think that as being adoptive children, we come and we choose a race. We choose to be black, green, purple. It doesn't matter. We are here for the experience. Mm -hmm. So, in, and that's why, as as with a woman, man, uh, nature element, animal elements, we, we are all really adopting Earth as a place to be, and and adopting what it is that we have to uh, to accomplish while we are here. But I want to touch on something you said, Marion, about acceptance, but values. Uh, and it comes again to the power of women. To me, our key mandate, the, the, real, the real important mission we have as women on earth is to not be distracted into the single most important mission we have on earth, which is to nurture. Whether it's other beings, whether it's the planet, whether it's an enterprise, whether it's a community, we, this is our mandate uh, to, to nurture. So, for example, as a woman, I'm thinking that it doesn't matter if I were to be the, the CEO of the largest uh, company in the world, if I were not to accomplish my mission of raising properly children, the children that were entrusted to me. I'm just the, let's say, caretaker. I'm there to simply um, water the plant, give it the nourishment so it can put out roots of and branches of their own. And I have to do this properly so they have good uh, fertilizing um, minerals in them to enable them to make wise decisions. Wise decisions such as, for example, not rejecting another person or not uh, uh, even judging another person or not tolerating uh, what is not conducive to the common good. If someone is not accepting of my color, of my race or my cultural background or anything, to me, it's fine. With, they have the right to, they have the right not to like me, but I have to make sure that I do what is also not against a human principle, wherever I am, in whichever setting I am. So on both ends, we have equal rights and, and responsibilities, but it all boils down. How to, can we make a world where we won't have biases, we won't have prejudices, we have more equalities for any race, any color, any group. I think it's if we take back that power and an important task there is nothing more important, I think, in the world that women are mandated to accomplish and, and not to uh, say that men cannot, but we are by default, we are entrusted with that task, is to give, to promote those values of humanity, telling a child, this kid uh, is a different color than you, is a different, uh, you know, they don't, we don't, you two don't speak the same language, but you play with that child. You well, let's invite that child, eat with us. And you have to treat that child and their family with utmost respect. There's no question about it. You see, the same way I raise my children, which will tell, they will tell you, mom is so mean, <laughs> which is true. You have to, because <laughs> principles are principles and that's what builds tomorrow. That's what builds the society of tomorrow. So cross-culturalism, yeah. Uh, changing mindsets through simply teaching the human values. And the human values would also have an impact. They, they will have repercussions for all around us. We won't have climate crisis if we tell the children respect, respect for others, respect for all, respect for all life. That means respect nature, respect animals too. So it, um, as we come back to that power, for me uh, as a woman, what I would, what I would be uh, wanting to exercise is in carrying out that mission of providing a framework for values, human, basic human values, is to watch for what is counterproductive, what is creating obstacles to that. So for example, now I know with more age and experience that if let's say um, my MP was to come to me with um, 
a petition. Would you like, uh, can you sign this for, so the government can allocate, uh, let's say so many millions of budget to buy another submarine? I would turn to that MP and say, can we not put that money instead in education? Or because I would rather see 3 million in programs for youth, in uh, better elder care or anything that builds the human, therefore builds the family, therefore builds the society, therefore builds the country. So I do not want another submarine, you see? <laughs> so, and because my, my task, my work is to nurture, to grow good plants, good humans. So a submarine means warfare, killing uh, or any other policy, insecticides, for example, insecticides, but that's, con it counters health. And I need the people that I'm in charge of to be healthy. So therefore I'm not gonna promote such a policy, you see? So this is, I think the, the functions and we must be unadamant about it. No, I do not want what's not good for mankind, for, for, for a human being. Therefore, it cannot be good for a collective either. That as a woman, we have to voice. We have to express very bluntly, no, we don't want what is not right for the sake of a, a, a human being, because that would reflect on the entire society. Yeah, it's... Can anybody out there hear me? Hear me?